Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a complete guide to the Power League all six modes. Giving you guys all the best compositions, bands, first picks, last picks, and also some example drafts from competitive. So all of the information you'll need to progress as much as possible in Power League. So before we jump into it then, make sure you're using the credit code in the shop. That'd be greatly appreciated. Without further ado, let's jump into the guide. All right, guys, jumping into the first game mode, it's going to be bouncing your first map, Canal Grande. So as you can see on the screen, these are going to be the best first picks, last picks, other strong picks and also an example draft so i tried to get as much competitive data as possible there's only really one tournament to compare this with and that was esl recently uh, so again i've not completely got the logistics of draft in this new meta but I feel like this is a pretty strong uh, i wouldn't say guess but calculation for canal grande so uh going into it then so with the first picks then for this map in particular i feel like uh aggro picks are only really good towards the end uh like i would say stay away from aggression as much as possible because a lot of the time people will just triple stack one lane and uh, maybe once you get a couple of kills maybe then start to go down both lanes but a lot of the time people just group up and it's really hard for aggro to really do anything so of course be a little bit wary of them i would say probably more so uh, if the opponent has a last pick probably look to ban out some of those aggro picks if you're a little bit scared of them you know like cole for example because he can easily fly and hook and get that first star you've also got like ash even jackie's somewhat decent as an aggro pick on this map so yeah still be a little bit careful of aggros towards the end but anyways going off the first picks i feel like squeak penny and janet in particular these are three brawlers that are just good against everything on this map squeak uh normally a brawler you don't want to pick towards the beginning but on canal grande his gadgets are so essential to gaining control and a lot of not basically no aggro so squeak's not really going to counter too easily you've also got penny just good against everything uh also as well uh, of course janet just gonna be so good at scouting the grass specifically with that gadget so you can always kind of rely on her there's also a lot of flexible brawlers as well eve pretty good with the reload gear you've also got bell brock to open up the map so that's gonna be canal grande let's jump into the next one okay guys so next up we have layer cake so as you can see on the screen these are going to be the best picks for layer cake so with layer cake in particular right now i feel like it's a pretty decent bounty map overall you can definitely go a lot of other options and aggro still can be pretty decent towards the end and also throwers as well throws are really dangerous on this map you can go multiple sprout tick grom etc etc so for the first pick uh, again uh, pretty much buster's first pick all of the time i would say it's more so right now unless you're literally at the top like legendary 2-3 you don't really need to ban out buster i feel like not a lot of people have him unlocked yet but if he doesn't get nerfed with him the next week and people start unlocking him at that level 30 which will probably be around a week's time i believe then start banning him out but anyways going towards the first pick a lot of people normally in um, competitive start to pick those really comfort brawlers on this map in particular so these gonna be brawlers like gene penny these are brawlers that you just can't go wrong with specifically on layer cake then you also got lots of janet still pretty decent piper is actually an amazing pick on this map i'll say that piper is somewhat out of the meta right now but on this map in particular you can go her as a lane or in mid it's really just optimal whichever lane is easier and she's really good against fellow sharpshoots so that's why she's actually first pickable on layer cake in particular and then you've got these other picks as well then so otis can just be okay overall gus is actually really strong on layer cake this is a map which i would say there's a lot of cover and you can get a lot of easy kills with him because of his gadgets so definitely be picking gus if you can you've also of course got the just same old bounty brothers you know bell brock's making a lot of a comeback in bounty right now because of the ability to reload so much quicker yeah there's just a lot of flexible options for me but just making sure you're getting these bands right is basically what you need to do in layer cake okay so now moving on to the third one for bounty and the final one it is shooting star so the shooting star meta just barely ever changes but it's a pretty nice map you always kind of know what to go somewhat so with shooting star then i feel like the same two bands every single time no matter meta piper and nanny you have to pretty much ban out every single time even though there are a few counters to nanny's peep I'll just say she's just too good of a brawler uh, for a map like shooting stars so in terms of the example draft and it's actually a really good one to look at because totem and sk are two of the best teams in the world right now so definitely take a look at that example draft getting to know how it can kind of play out so basically how this map really plays out is uh of course you're gonna have your long range brawlers uh you know like b for example 
Bells, Byron's even. This is a map which Byron's actually used on quite a fair bit because he actually has a really fast projectile speed and an easier to hit shot as well. So he can actually counter other sharpshooters, you know, like B for example, and have a decent matchup against Bell. So that's probably why you see him a little bit more so than you probably see him elsewhere. You've also got brawlers like Eve, which I'm seeing a lot in scrims right now, specifically uh, with the likes of AC Milan Clash. I've seen Eve so much and it actually really works out pretty well because you can get a lot of aggression through the water in the middle so yeah i mean shooting star i feel like you guys should know how to draft on this map but don't be afraid to try out a few of the alternative picks like that Eve. okay guys so now moving on to Bribble, starting off with pinhole punt so you see the graphic on the screen to see all the best picks first pick last pick and whatever else you need so with this map in particular i'm casting a lot of Bribble right now if you guys want to wear on twitch uh but basically it's only a Bribble league so i feel like i know probably the most about Bribble than any other game mode so this is the best picks for uh, Pinhole Punt. So we have, of course, Buster is just crazy right now. I mean, there's no point really explaining too much about him, but yeah, it's just really hard to counter. There's only really other fellow tanks that can counter him right now. Also, the likes of B, of course, everyone knows B is really strong in this meta, but this is the one map which, if you don't have first pick, you need to ban out 100%. B has always been a top ruler or the best ruler on this map in particular, no matter where she is in the meta. So now she's even stronger. Uh, you just need to ban B. She's so good at pinching either lane and Ruffs. Ruffs is this brawler in Brubble right now where no matter what as a first pick, you're pretty much going to get ultimate value with him because you're going to have the sandbags to defend yourself or the other gadget to apply pressure. And then you have the super, of course, which you're able to break up the map so easily. Ruffs is brawler that can combine with everyone. So if in doubt ever within a draft stage, just go at Ruffs. You can never go wrong with him in Brubble. So also got brawlers like Max, of course, you can be so aggressive in the middle with a Max. You can combine her with pretty much anyone. And then you also have a Janet, of course. Again, another brawler specifically on this map, you're gonna get a lot of value out of. And then Otis, you can either put him as a lane or a mid as well. So in terms of last picks, definitely be careful of either like a Barley or an Ash. I've seen a lot of Ash in Brubble right now. And I would say that you always have to have someone in your composition that can deal with those tanks, right? Whether that's Otis, whether that's Gay or B, someone that can shut down a tank because as the draft goes on, it's probably going to be more likely that your opponents are going to pick a tank because they're incredibly strong in Brubble right now. Uh, you've got also other last picks, you know, Squeak, you've always got to be careful of him. So again, you've got to make sure you've got some kind of aggression or HP on the side of your team because Squeak is such a demon as a last pick. So these are going to be the best brawlers for Pinhole. Let's hop into the next one. Okay, so next up we have Sneaky Fields. So for Sneaky Fields, then of course... You know, it's really grassy maps. So you've got to be careful of the aggro. So as you can see on the screen, we've got the best picks right here. So the same old really with Brubble. I feel like the Brubble meta is pretty much the same for every single map. You have, again, even brothers like Ruffs, you can pretty much go as a first pick every single time. I want to advise going two wall breaks uh, in the same composition on this map in particular because you can still get pretty overwhelmed by aggression. But of course, Buster as well going to be really good with the grass. You can even go him as a first pick. B, I would say that B is, of course, really strong in Brubble. But you have to go a wall break 100%. Whether that's a wall break on the enemy side or your side, make sure there's at least a wall break because there's probably other better mid options, you know, like Otis, you know, like Max, for example, uh, rather than to be on this map. Unless everything gets broken up, of course. So, in terms of uh, last picks as well, I feel like this is the map which everyone knows that, of course, you've got to be careful of those aggressive picks. Brawlers like Rosa, Ash, you've got to be really careful of towards the end of the draft stage even barley i've seen quite a few times on sneaky fields because they're just so good at taking down those squishier brawlers so definitely be careful of that one of course you got brawlers like griff who can easily open up like the entire map griff is just such a demon on this map in particular because you can easily just push your lane once you get your super you can cycle it so quickly and with the reload gear recently it just feels like this is griff's perfect game mode it's so hard to actually counter him out also poker you've got to be a little bit careful of as well so making sure you've at least got some kind of wall break to counter him i would say uh, just because uh, if it gets in that grass it can be so hard to oppose him still even with the recent nerf uh, you've got brawlers like penny you can put mid at, or a lane you see a lot of penny right now in brawl because there's not a lot that really counteracts a penny except for those throwers and yeah overall you know there's a ton of other options you, you can go with just look for the synergy picks and you've got to really just kind of look at the enemy composition right it's hard to just tell you guys what composition to go because it's always reactive on what your opponents and teammates go okay and lastly for Brubble, then we have super beach so with super beach 
Again, brawlers like B are just going to be so good in the middle. But on this map in particular, there's a couple of power picks which you've got to be really careful of. So making sure you're either banning those brawlers out because uh, if the map gets opened up a little bit too much, it's just not a lot of brawlers you can go right. So uh, yeah, be careful of those brawlers. So Ruffs and Griff are the two in particular that I'm pretty scared of facing because as you guys know on this map, literally the left and the right wall can get broken up by either one Ruff Super or just one gadget of Griff. Of course, he's got three gadgets, so the entire mid uh, area can just be completely destroyed with Griff. And then it's just so hard to really oppose him when everyone's opened up. And then if they pair that with like a B, for example, that's just not a synergy that you want to be facing. So either make sure you've got that or at least one of those brothers are banned out. Then on this map in particular as well, of course, you've still got aggro and brawl, but aggro is going to be pretty good towards the end. So as always, I do recommend having something that can deal with tanks pretty well or else you're going to get walked all over. You know, brawlers like Ash again, you know, Cole is making a really big resurgence in the brawl meta. I see him so much in brawl league right now because a lot of the time people ban out those Cole counters, you know, brawlers like Surge. Gale, for example, if those brawlers are banned, then Carl can just have a field there on everyone because of his flying hook being able to get so much pressure. You've got to be really careful of the Barley on this map in particular because he can easily just lock down the entire map by himself on this map. He's so good on it. So again, a lot of other flexible brawlers. If the opponent does go a B, you can obviously go other brawlers as well, like a Bell to counteract that on this map in particular. So be aware of that one. Ems is pretty good down the lane. She's able to keep her lane pretty easily. Also, uh, Nita as well. But with Nita and Ems, you got to be careful, again, because these wall break options will outrange you. So that's going to be super beach. Let's hop into the next one. Okay, so now moving on to gem grab, starting off with a double swoosh. So the double swoosh meta really hasn't changed too much from the previous meta, but here are the best first picks and last picks. So within double swoosh, I feel like it's pretty obvious that probably the best first pick for the mid in particular is Jean. Of course, you can go other things as well, but Jean's just so good at scouting the grass, so good at pinching the lane specifically with that vision gear. So making sure you're either battling it out or picking it yourself. Buster is just crazy everywhere. So you'll see in the gameplay a lot of times, even if I'm getting pinched out a lot, I'm just causing so much pressure. You also have a Janet, of course. She's just so good in particular. You'll see a lot on the grassy maps. She gets banned out if the opponents have first pick because that to drop the base, I think it's called uh, Gadget. It's just so good at scouting the grass. It's really hard to push into. And then you have the likes of Max, you know, in the mid can be pretty solid overall. And Stu. Stu with the Speed Zone Gadget is so incredibly strong on this map in particular because it can easily dash in and out of the mid. He also is a pretty okay counter to the likes of Gene and the likes of Max because, you, of course, you can use your gadgets and also just your dashes to do dodge Gene. And also against Max, you have a pretty good 1v1. But anyways, moving on to the last picks then. So you don't really see too many tankier options on this map in particular. You know, brothers like Bonnie actually get picked a lot by, uh, by teams like SK. And it can be pretty decent as a lane as long as you're not facing too much aggression. Because as a Bonnie, of course, you can easily just launch yourself onto the gem carrier. And probably 9 times out of 10, get the kill on the gem carrier because of how easy it is just to pick an opponent and kill them with Bonnie. Uh, but other than that, you know, you just got your generic double swoosh brothers. You know, brothers like Otis, you can pretty much always go because you can either put him as a mid or a lane you can never go wrong with that also of course you've got bros like penny that you can just put mid or lane as well bow is really good at specifically if you synergize it with a brawler that has a strong super so i know tara isn't really in the meta right now but if you want to go for that it can still be okay i've seen also strategies with like a bow and like a surge for example where down the left hand side you put a totem and then surge can sit in it and if everyone anyone wants to push a surge you're just going to feed his super right or he's just going to get his super off the super totem so some really cheesy strategies with bow on this map in particular amber's going to be insane on this map because she counts a lot of lane brawlers and of course the fire you can put it down the lane to destroy the grass and also in the mid to destroy the grass it's really going to help you out in those interactions so that's double swoosh let's hop into the next one okay so next up it is crystal arcade so unfortunately i didn't have any gameplay of it available and no pro teams actually played this map but this is going to be the best first picks and last pick so it could be a little bit wrong inside of this one but for that like this is pretty much the generic crystal arcade meta i don't think it's changed really whatsoever except for busters so as you can see the best first picks then so you've got brawlers like roofs and griffs a uh, griff again which is so good against everything only takes one super to of course break open your lane and then it's just gonna be really hard for any of you know those other brawlers you know like ems for example you know, like tara to really thrive because one wall break is just literally going to be the death of them they can't sneak around anymore when that grass is gone so 
uh, yeah that's why i advise picking either a griff or a roof within your composition of course a janet again with like gadgets able to scout the grass gonna make it really easy for you and your mid to pinch out one of those lane brawlers otis you can go mid or lane i mean it's not really advised to go mid but it's just really flexible so you can never go wrong with bro like otis and gene as well being able to pinch is essential on crystal arcade but that is the main tactic right as long as your mid is a good mid and it's going to help you out in your lane battle you're going to win the game for the most time in crystal arcade it's really defined on that mid pinch and then you've got brothers like max of course synergize pretty much with everything and of course you've got to be a, a little bit careful of those brothers like carl and ash they're making such a good return to the meta right now bow can be over okay on this map because his mines can break open uh the mid pretty easily so wouldn't be a disgrace to go bow and i do complain about bow a lot but a good bow a good aggressive bow will actually have a lot of value penny of course again mid or lane you're gonna have tremendous value with her amber crow all of these different brawlers you can have a good matchup with in crystal arcade okay so moving into the final gem grab uh map we have hard rock mine so hard rock mine as well really hasn't changed too much to be honest you have a few other brawlers that might sneak in sneak into the meta but the same types of rico roofs are going to be the go-to first picks on this map in particular janet buster as well going to be some incredibly strong brawlers and you can never go wrong with brawlers like max and otis you see the same type of brawlers in the meta right can be a little bit repetitive but i feel like you can still go a lot of options other than like first and last pick if you get what i mean so you've got other brawlers like squeak can still really shut down certain lanes with his gadget but only towards the end of the draft stage because of course any aggro will really fold him you also have the likes of Stu, which is an incredible last pick on this map because if you have your matchup against the likes of any kind of squishy brawler or a brawler like rico you're going to have, have a really good time with a breakthrough gadget with a stew and then with the mid options there's a plentiful options you can go gene you can go max bell 8-bit is insane on this map in particular because of course there's not really many things to counter him out in the mid and he's really good against aggro himself so i always recommend an 8-bit on this map in particular you know you've got brawlers like bow you can even put lane as well so that's going to be harder at mine let's jump into the next one okay so now moving into high sense so starting off with safe zone i feel like safe zone is a map that a lot of people know how to play already but it's only a few changes to the meta like the introduction of the reload gear with brawlers like bell and brock and making them a lot more of a stronger pick in this map in particular so see a lot of brock first pick right now beforehand i was a bit skeptical of picking brock you know before you got that reload gear but right now he's just so good in heist because a lot of times in heist the tactic will be is to always go for damage rather than the control compositions damage will nine times out of ten win because you only need one push in heist to just accumulate so much da damage uh, especially if you got a brawler uh, like brock for example you know if you got a brawler another brawler that can pair well with him like a tankier option maybe not on safe zone you get what i mean you're just going to accumulate so much damage really quickly so in terms of first picks as well then of course both are going to be really insane and then colette you've got to be careful with a colette though because she can get countered sometimes by griff because of his business resilience star power so be careful of that matchup in particular but still she's a really good first pick option because of course in heist she's just really strong with her gotcha gadget and then bell in the middle is insane on this map in particular you've got her nest eggs in the middle being able to get a lot of control but you've also just got her reload gear and she's also a decent counter to be so that's why she's just locks down mid so easily otis can go down lane or mid as well and then griff to break open the walls there's other last picks as well you know the standard aggression you know like a daryl if they haven't got any uh counters to a daryl he's gonna be so good down the right hand side same goes with fang as well so that's gonna be safe zone let's open to the next one okay so now moving on to pit stops so unfortunately i haven't got complete gameplay of pit stops so you'll have to just see the second game of safe zone but anyways moving on to pit stop and the best brawlers as see by the graphic these are the best brawlers for pit stop so one thing i would like to know as well about pit stop is that this map in particular is so aggro friendly again i mentioned it in the first uh, one with safe zone you need to go aggressive picks because damage will win nine times out of ten so you'll just see so many tanks in this map uh, like i do recommend as well going brawlers that are just really good uh, uh like both things right so these are brawlers like Nita, like ems that are like brawlers that can defend well but then turn that into a counter push and get a lot of damage you know of course Nita with hyper bear is actually pretty meta for the pros uh when it comes down to heist but then you also have ems of course she can defend really well against tanks because you know it's ems she deletes tanks and then you can also turn that to a counter attack and get so much damage with her main attack so 
you've got to be using at least one of those brothers, right? You want to be able to turn the defense into offense pretty well. That's why you see a lot of Daryl first pick on this map in particular, because you can just never go wrong with an aggro or two. You know, Daryl, Bull, Buzz, uh, Buster, you know, there's so many different options. El Primo even on this map I'm seeing a lot of because he's just so incredibly strong on heist. You also got to, of course, have the flexible brawler that I mentioned, you know, Ruffs, Rico, uh, even brawlers like Stu that are also good against those tank counters. So a lot to choose from in pit stop, but make sure you're going aggro. Okay, so now moving on to the final heist map we have at Bridge Too Far. So as you can see on the screen, these are going to be your best options. So again, this map hasn't really changed too much, but I feel like more so now in the heist, the reload gear brawlers, uh, obviously there's only about 10 of them. Those are going to be the more important brawlers on heist in particular because of course you're going to get increased dps and you combine this with the damage gear it's just going to lead to so much damage on your attack so these are why brawlers in particular uh you know like lola 8-bit these brawlers are going to be so incredibly strong on this map so you can see by the first picks then you know piper is going to be the uh, ultimate first pick on this map because she's so good against fellow snipers so that's why everyone is pretty much picking her same goes with bella as well she's pretty much good against everything and then on this map in particular it's just so obnoxious facing off against the bell that's constantly hitting the safe and then her shots rebound off it rebound onto you it's pretty hard to get out of that spawn trap right so that's why i always recommend bell colette as well down the lane so hard to face off against when she's got the gotcha gadget and then she's going to get a lot of damage in heist Otis a pretty good brother to lock down the lane and Lola as I mentioned like of course with a reload gear she's going to get insane damage last picks I'd say still be careful of the aggro because brothers like Daryl Fang and Buzz can have an insane matchup against you Carl as well so definitely be careful of that one you've also got brothers like Bonnie who of course they're primarily known as a sniper but she can literally launch herself across all lanes so that's why she's a really dangerous pick on this map in particular okay so now moving on to hot zone starting off with ring of fire so this is actually going to be the gameplay for all three of the maps by the way i just i don't know what happened with the, the gameplay but anyways going on with ring of fire and so of course ring of fire is going to be a map that uh you can go a lot of different options on but one thing i would like to note in particular is to make sure to go brawlers that of course good in that mid battle of course you always want one brawler flanking either down the right or the left but primarily you want two brawlers in the middle maybe even all three brawlers in the middle main reason i'm saying that is because i see a lot of time people go wrong on this map They've, you know they pick a rico who used to be good like a year ago but a lot of the times it's just so easy to just ignore rico and keep going down the middle because his main attack isn't completely the best in the middle if you get what i mean but anyways this is going to be the best pick so crow is going to be insane on this map in particular because his main attack is just so easy to hit and then of course when you cycle your jumps when you've got the slow it's really easy to gain control back with a brawler like uh, crow that's why i really like him here brawlers like b are going to be able to shut down so many different avenues of course you got brawlers as lou i'll say more so as a last pick on this map because you know i did make a video about lou being pretty op but i feel like still People learn how to dodge his main attack a little bit too easily, specifically when, you know, you're facing off against like a Stu with a speed zone. It's so hard to hit uh, a, a Stu, so you've got to be careful of that one. Squeak, of course, going to be able to shut down pretty much everywhere. So you've got to be careful of all of these brothers. But Ring of Fire, it's pretty standard. Just send a lot of people down the middle. Okay, so next up, we have Dueling Beetles. So as you can see on the screen, these are going to be the best picks for Dueling Beetles. So Dueling Beetles is a map which, of course, has the three really defined lanes. So brothers that are able to shut off lanes really easily are going to be really strong. So these are going to be brothers like Janet, brothers like Penny. Of course, you can pretty much put her everywhere. She's always going to get value with her turret and her main attack. She's always that brawler that you can rely on when it comes down to the early stages of the draft. So don't be afraid just to draft her, even though sometimes she'll be a little bit boring. She's just so incredibly strong in the draft meta. So brawlers like B, of course, are going to be absolutely insane. She's going to be able to pop off on this map because it's just so open. Stu as well, speed zone, turret. It's literally his best game mode in hot zone. Even with the recent nerf to his gadget, it's still going to be just so essential to get in a lot of pressure in the middle. And then Otis as well can never go wrong with him. So in this map in particular, I'd be afraid of a couple of rulers, maybe like a Poco and a Lua. Lou can really shut off the zone on this map in particular. Other than that, I mean, maybe a Sprout as well. Just make sure you're not going to squish your brawlers basically or have a wall break and you won't get countered by a Sprout. So in terms of other picks then so gus is actually a really underrated one i didn't mention him in ring of fire but i feel like gus is best game mode by far is hot zone because you can easily pair your super with a brawler that is gonna get a lot of time onto the zone you know 4k hp without shield it's insane so gus is definitely a really good synergy brawler and especially if you get his ghosts on the zone 
you know the opponent's gonna have to push onto that and you it's gonna allow you to get a lot of easy damage with that gadget and then you know of course you got brawlers like griff that can open up the map meg is actually a really underrated pick on this map in particular but there's a lot of options you can go just make sure you're reacting with the right counters okay and lastly we have open zones so as you can see on the screen these are gonna be the best compositions for open zones so for me the brawlers you gotta be making sure the opponents don't get if they are first pick Max and Stu. If they get both those brawlers, it's pretty much GG because of how good we are on this map in particular. Penny gonna be pretty decent. Janet, Otis, all brawlers are gonna be pretty strong. And then again, the same old last picks you gotta be really careful of. You know, speed zone, Stu, and a Poco are pretty dangerous. I mean, Poco in general is actually really strong on this map in particular. I also seen a couple of times Meg on this map, uh, which Meg is actually making a bit of a comeback uh, when it comes down to uh when it comes down to hot zone right now because Ring of Fire used to be the map she was always good on. But I've seen her in the open zone and she really popped off. It does take a little while to get her first mech. But because she's got so much HP, it's pretty hard to get her off the zone in general. So yeah, make sure you actually make use of that underrated meg pick. You also have brawlers like Gus again, who are just so good in an open map. But just so good at synergizing with pretty much any brawler that likes to sit on a zone. You know, brawlers like Poker, for example, actually have an amazing synergy with Gus. Because, you know, you don't want to push into a Poker. You don't want to feed his super. And it's just, of course, pretty easy to hit shots with Poco. So... Also got brothers like Bell, really open map. It's pretty easy to use her on. Crow as well. When it's an open map, you know, he's going to be really easy to hit shots with and also just find targets to super on. Okay, guys, so moving on to the final game mode, we have a knockout and starting off with Gold Arm Gooch. So with first picks, then you have a lot of options. But for me, you know, brothers that have uh, the capability of getting a couple of quick taps in, you know, like Bonnie and Piper are going to be insane on this map in particular, but also Max as well. You know, the ability to eventually build up your speed and then just force the opponents back, you know, knockout essentially is a lot to do with pressure if you can pressure opponents towards the storm get a hold of the middle of the map you're going to be winning the game a lot of the time and then also as well if you just get that lucky sick pick which is like a good aggro brawler you're going to be able to counter a lot of these brawlers so you see brawlers like tick as well tick is a really good brawler on gold arm, uh, gold arm gulch again he started to go out of meta a little bit but if you uh ban out a couple of brawlers that might counter him you know like a bonnie for example a carl uh, you're gonna have a good time with tick because he's got a recent new mythic gear it's gonna really allow him to pop off a lot more in knockout in particular and then gus as well gus just a really good defensive brawler on this type of map uh also a last pick sense so of course fang if fang is a brawler that you'll always kind of rely on and knock out you know for example if they go like three kind of squishy brawlers or brawlers that have no cancellation then fang is just going to be insane on knockout so definitely make use of that also on this map you know i've already mentioned tick but sprout as a last pick can be a really solid option squeak of course literally everywhere's sixth pick is really dangerous you've also got all those other safe picks as well you can never go wrong as like a second third or fourth pick as like a gene a bell a penny Brock, Bo, Eve, these are some really good, comfortable brawlers. All right, guys, so now jumping into Out in the Open, uh, which we, you can see the best picks on the screen already then. So in terms of Out in the Open, again, brawlers like Bonnie and Max are pretty much the best picks because, you know, as time goes on, it can be pretty hard to resist the pressure of these brawlers. Both supers are really uh, influential to how the kind of last fight or just the early pressure kind of unfolds. So brawlers like Gene are going to be insane on this map in particular because literally one basic attack kind of scout the the whole middle grass there and specifically with vision it's gonna be pretty hard to stay unnoticed right when there's a gene just constantly spamming his shots at you and then you have brothers like gus again you can afford to be really defensive on this map in particular you can just sit around wait for the gas to move in and gus is just gonna allow you you know if you hit your shields right to get so much pressure pair that with an aggro and it's pretty much gg you see brothers like brock as well be really good on this map because one gadget can break open that back wall and this what this allows you to do basically if you have brock uh, you want to do that because it lets you get out of spawn a lot easier because if you lose a bit of pressure you're instantly going to get spawn trapped, right? You probably played this map and get got spawn trapped a ton. So, wall break option will really help you not get spawn trapped. And then Piper, of course, this is a really good long range map. So, she's going to be good against everything. So, this is where the last picks come into play as well. Fang, amazing. Sprout, amazing as well. His walls are going to be able to zone off so easily. Squeak, really good with a residue gadget. And Nanny. Nanny is actually an option I've seen a lot within the past uh, few days in competitive. Like, I didn't really see Nanny too much, but paired with like a bow, for example, in the back is pretty strong 
but also Nani's just good at countering long range brawlers so you can get a lot of value out of her in this map in particular okay and lastly for bell's rock uh we have these as the best picks so again genius brawler within knockout you can pretty much go as a first pick pretty much all the time now there are a few counters to it gene but overall he provides such good uh healing with his first star power and also his pull just holds so much weight in a game mode like knockout because the first skill is so incredibly important so if you can get a good gene pull get the first kill you're pretty much gonna win the round pretty much all of the time right because if it's like a free for two uh, even if you're in a 2v3 for example it's so hard to make a comeback so be careful of that first kill by the way and then we have brothers like bonnie so bonnie again of course just pretty much good against everything and the ability just to launch yourself onto someone when they're like 1.5k hp you literally kill them when you land so it's always good value with that and of course bell on a map like bell's rock she's going to be really strong she's good against pretty much everything right now in the meta you've seen her so much and again as last picks you see the same time and time again with every game mode like knockout you can't go wrong with any of these last picks or banning any of these brawlers i would say probably ban out a lot of throwers if uh, you're facing a last pick, if you get what I mean. Like you don't want to face off against Sprout or Tick if you have like three sharpshooters. It's just going to be GG. They're so good against those type of brawlers. Now, Penny you can pretty much go on every single game mode. You can't go wrong with her in a draft. You know, Otis, for example, even Eve on this map is actually pretty strong. You know, Bo as well. So there's a lot of options to go with Knockout. All right, guys, it's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one. So this took a lot, a lot of time of playing the game and also uh, like looking at competitive data. You know, it took a long time to make. So I appreciate you guys' support on this one. Probably a little bit of a longer video than I anticipated, but I just had so much things, so many things to cover. Maybe I'll actually do these in a short uh, as well so you guys can just look at every single map in particular on these shorts let me know whether you want to see that but yeah that's gonna be it for today's video guys hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time